Hey everyone, in today's video, I'll be putting together a small form factor with a 12th gen Intel chipset on a 5 liter K39 V3 case. For this build, I'll be just using the Intel 770 UHD graphics. This is mainly for emulation. And also I'll be running some heavy emulators like RPCS3, Yuzu, and CMU. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you can watch some of my future videos like in-depth review, emulator tests, customization, and many others. But for now, I'll be sharing some unboxing, do some benchmarks, and gain tests, and see if it would be worth putting something like this together. Hello, my name is Fredo, and you're watching Project Edging. Moving over, the parts used in this build are the K39 V3 case, a now Rus B660i with DDR4 support, and the i5 12600K, hmm, why the K series? I'll mention it later in the video. 32GB G skill, non RGB, a Samsung 970 Evo Plus, 300W FPS flex screw with modular cables, a Chromebook Noctua NHL9i. I've left all the links to everything used here. Everything will be in the description box below. So let's get started. The SGPC K39 V3 build is actually very simple with some struggles on the cable management. Although it comes with some cool orange handles and a brown shaft for hand carrying, additional acrylic panel, and a PCIe riser cable. With that, I'm really liking the overall look of the case. Next, we have the Aorus B660i with a DDR4 support. I was honestly aiming for DDR5 version, but decided to do this simply because of the availability and a slight lower performance. Up next, we have the 12600K CPU. Doesn't come with any stock cooler in it. The reason why I bought the K series is because of the additional power. This CPU comes with a 10 cores and 16 threads, which has a higher and better performance compared with the non K series. Here I just bought a 32GB of RAM for more productivity performance, especially on multitasking. For the cooler, I'll be using a Chrome Max Noctua L9i. I will go with a black ridge if I have plans to do some overclocking in the future. Next, straight out of the butt, a Samsung 970 EVO NVNE Plus to have a faster read and write. Based on my experience, this will boost the reading time in emulating some heavy games. Finally, we have a 300 watts FSP Flex Guru. I think 300 watts is good enough for this build, but not future proof. The cables are also modular, so it really helps to hide those unwanted cables when you're using an acrylic case cover. Do also remember, if you plan to slot a 3060 GPU, I would suggest getting a 550 watts PSU or higher will be enough. So after installing everything, let's go over some emulation tests. I'm going to mute myself and let you watch the performance of this move footprint. My vengeance ends now.
located in Sector 6. Dispatching time cleaning. Time anomalies detected on planet to see Sir, the registry shows that the number of Zoe has dwindled from 117,000 to 205. Zoe!
Receiver! So overall, it turned out really great. It is an awesome case, super compact, easy to set up, and has a lot of full accessories. Performance-wise, the 12600K with the DDR4 RAM, it really delivered what it was supposed to. But I guess the 5700G is still the way to go when it comes to APU in terms of FPS and performance in gaming. The only pros for Intel, it is cooler and more efficient than the Ryzer 5 series. So that's all I have for now. If you have anything you want to see from me, let me know in the comment section. 
In my next video, I'll be doing a more in-depth review of this new processor and testing more games and emulators on this build. As always, thanks for watching and have a good game everyone. See you in the next video. Peace.